pillars. We have, of course, uh, talked about the issue that is affecting us uh, majorly, uh, which is the security issues. And this is something we uh, mentioned since last night. I even have to commend and uh, thank President Will uh, Ramaphosa for not only his presence, but also uh, uh, for his uh, uh, interest in the issues of uh, stability and security in the Eastern DRC. So uh, we really focused on those things, and he uh, demonstrated a burning desire uh, to support the DRC, and we are even uh, aiming at having uh, uh, bilateral agreements in addition to what is already existing at the level of SADC regarding solidarity between states uh, when uh, one is uh, uh, attacked. Uh, we are even uh, undertaking to have a bilateral agreement, uh, DRC South Africa, regarding these issues. But we will uh, find out more about this in the coming days and the coming weeks. Uh, because, of course, these are decisions that should be based upon uh, regulations that will be uh, DRC has sufficiently uh, 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 talked about sectors uh, that we focused on because here it is all about the key thing is that we should create a nexus Pretoria, Kinshasa, which will be uh, will have uh, outcomes, positive outcomes across the entire southern African region because uh, be, those two big countries have assets, considerable assets. I would not come back to talk about uh, uh, assets of the two countries, and they have to be the triggers for development of the region, and they even have the capacity to do that. So this is uh, the outlines of what we have just said, uh, both my counterparts and uh, myself, and we also met some time later when we received the, the reports of the work done by respective delegations, and we even realized that, of course, uh, this, uh, uh, our thoughts were really translated in the discussions and reports that we saw from the delegations. So this means that we are ready at this moment to undertake a, 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 a stronger relation and uh, a more effective uh, relation that will give uh, yield uh, outcomes that will be uh, really beneficial for both of our states. This is what I can say at this moment. Excellency, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa. Cyril Ramaphosa, welcome in the DRC. So um, this is your first visit in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So uh, do you have a message, any message for Congolese people? Well, thank you very much. It's a real joy and a pleasure to be here in the DRC and also to have been so well, well, warmly welcomed by President Chisekedi as well as uh, the people of the DRC. We value the relationship between South Africa and the DRC greatly. It's a relationship that dates way back and has its great, the, the strong foundation from the commitment that Nelson Mandela demonstrated towards the DRC right in the beginning and the troubled days. And we were overjoyed when things started falling into place. And we have stayed as a keen partner of the DRC throughout the years. And our visit here, this uh, 12th Binational Commission, is a further consolidation of that relationship and the commitments and the decisions that were made by our respective parties. And let me tell you that our ministers and officials 
worked extremely hard in the past three or four days in preparation for this binational commission meeting. And we've arrived at 81 decisions, decisions around important and fundamental issues of uh, consolidating and cementing our partnership. That should tell everyone that this is indeed a very special partnership between the two countries. And I couldn't agree more with President Chisekedi when he says it's, it's a Pretoria-Kinshasa nexus that links the two countries together and the agreements as well as the decisions that have been taken just help to cement that relationship and solidify it. As earlier said, we are willing, prepared, and uh, always ready to support the DRC as we have done in the past and will continue doing so, even in its most challenging times, such as security, as well as its economic development. As President Chisekedi says, on the issue of security, South Africa has been heavily invested and heavily present in the DRC on the eastern side, and we are also going to strengthen that relationship by having a bilateral agreement on security and defense. That is going to be finalized, and I'm really pleased that our ministers of defense have had really deep discussions around this. But the economy is another area of cooperation between the two countries. Our two countries have a lot of resources, resources that are attracting everyone in the world. And uh, we have said that through our ministers of minerals and energy, we should find a way in which our top class people together to talk about what we should do with our minerals. The DRC has enormous endowments when it comes to minerals particularly strategic and critical minerals. South Africa also has the same, and a number of other countries. And the idea that we should have a minerals commission, which will assist all of us, particularly in SADC, to manage our minerals correctly, so that they are not plundered by those from outside our region and continent, so that we establish policies, so that we are able to attract investments together to beneficiate our minerals, so that we no longer see our minerals going out of our countries as stones and sand. We should see us exporting products made in our own countries out of the minerals that we, we produce. Trade is another important area of cooperation. Aviation is another important area. And agriculture is another important area. Transportation, the building of roads uh, in our two countries. So this relationship is so rich, and we want to make it even more rich so that we get business people from both South Africa and the DRC dealing with each other. We will be going to a business forum, President Chisekedi and I, after we leave here. And so the two countries have a lot that they can exploit and develop. Minister Pando spoke about the Grand uh, Inga project. Now, this was signed in 2013, and it has just been lying dead. Through this BNC, we have now recommitted ourselves 
to reviving the Grand Inga project. I spoke about it in Europe a few days ago and called upon the world, particularly the financing institutions, to help fund this mega project. This we see as a continental project because the power that will be generated from the Grand Inga is going to supply energy and electricity to many countries around the DRC. South Africa certainly is going to benefit, and so will a number of other countries. So we stand in great support of the Grand Inga project, and we're very grateful that uh, the DRC came up with the idea of this project, and we support the DRC. We're going to be joining the DRC as well to make this project come alive, because it has been sleeping and dead for quite a long time. So our presence here is a great success uh, in that the relationship is now going to be turbocharged. It's going to be put at a much higher level, and we're going to be able to get things done. And the other important thing is that we want to go beyond talking and get into action and implementation. So our ministers are going to meet in what we call mid-term uh, processes before President Chisakedi comes to South Africa for the 13th bina uh, binational. We will have a mid-term. The ministers will meet, review what we have all decided to do, and take activity forward. So I am personally very pleased to be here. And uh, I want to thank our ministers, President Chichasekedi, on both sides. I know they've been working very hard, and they were not sleeping or resting on the banks of the Congo River. They were really working, and uh, we thank them for that. Thank you, Mr. President. So thank you, Mr. President, for these opening remarks. Um, we're going to take some questions from oh. journalists. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> on n'a pas fini. Alors, s'il vous plaît, mesdames et messieurs de la presse, de poser now, des questions the qui n'ont pas été uh, ask, dites, on va dire, dans le communiqué uh, final, parce que le communiqué you final, not on est d'accord avec vous. Vous ne devez pas poser des questions au final du communiqué come back with questions related to the final communique, which was very informative and clear. I'm going to start with Mr. Chris Ochamongima, who is going to uh, speak on behalf of SABC Africa. My first question goes to you, uh, President Salim Ramaphosa. Um, you have mentioned that South Africa and the DRC have signed a number of bilateral agreements aimed at achieving the shared prosperity of both people. But you cannot have prosperity when there's a conflict. And you mentioned that there's a security agreement that you're going to come up with. Now, there's a widely held view in the international community and the East African region that this conflict, the one by the M23, should be resolved through dialogue. The DRC government isn't willing to have any dialogue with the M23 because they consider them terrorists who are supported by Rwanda. And the UN group of experts recently confirmed that. I would like to know what South Africa will be doing differently to try and resolve, help the DRC res resolve this problem that has brought so much suffering to the Congolese people. My other question is to, one question to President Sekedi. Okay, Tata Mokonzina Lingina Tunayona Lingala, Paskina Lubaka Francais Mabe. Mr. President, I want to ask you the question because uh, a few months ago you uh, invited Sadek uh, um, to, to address uh, war issues in the DRC. Now, uh, your population expected to see those, but they did not see them. But when will they come and what will be their mandate? Please explain in French so that I can really. Uh, we can really capture your view on this. Thank you. President and I uh, had the wide ranging uh, discussions on many issues, and we also shared our common view on the resolution of uh, conflicts, 
not only on our continent, but globally as well. And we agreed that the best way that is tried and tested of resolving conflicts is through dialogue, through when people sit down and uh, are able to find ways of negotiating. And the conflict that's going on on the east of DRC is a conflict that is being processed, that's being addressed by our regional organization, as well as by the AU. And uh, SADC is also involved, as is the East African community, as is the AU, and all those processes involve dialogue, negotiation, conflict resolution. It involves people who are appointed and uh, chosen to intervene in those dialogues. President Lorenzo of Angola is involved, and the various uh, structures of the AU are also involved. And all that is about negotiation, my good friend. It's about dialogue, and uh, President Chisekedi could never be against resolving conflicts through this tried and tested method of resolving conflicts. I was also able to share with President Chisekedi the other initiative that uh, African leaders from seven countries have engaged upon uh, to try and see how best the conflict that is thousands of kilometers away from our continent can also be resolved. And that too is underpinned by dialogue and negotiation. And that is the message that we also took to Ukraine and Russia. And we told them that this is the tried and tested method that we utilize on our continent to resolve conflicts. So that being the best method to resolve conflicts cannot be rejected by anyone. And indeed, it is also embraced by leaders in the SADC region, as also demonstrated on many occasions when President Chisekedi has briefed SADC leaders about this conflict as well. So thank you very much. Before uh, answering the question, please allow me to uh, come back on what uh, my colleague, uh, my counterpart, President Cyril Ramaphosa, just said to also answer your question, the question that you asked. I would like to say this. This is the first time for me to hear that uh, we uh, do not like to discuss with the Rwanda, engage with the Rwanda. I should remind that Rwanda has never recognized or has always uh, told lies on the truth of his aggression against the DRC. He has always, always presented the issue as a domestic issue, like a domestic issue for the Congo. And uh, the M23 considered them as Congolese who revolted because of what is happening in their community. But everybody knows today that this is uh, lies. And Rwanda is still uh, not accepting that and pretending that they are not aggressing the DRC in spite of all the proven uh, proofs, uh, all the documents that are attesting and certifying their aggression. In such a particular situation, you're going to realize that it is very difficult to engage and discuss with the Rwanda because they do not accept their role. Uh, they should not uh, belittle us by sending uh, a small little group of people that uh, only want to come and discuss with the government with such as us, a legitimate government, a recognized government, internationally speaking. So they send some of those uh, nominees, uh, and uh, they want us to engage in discussing with them and to just go back to, that's why the Rwanda would never like to engage in discussions, and this is the reason why the DRC is uh, against the idea of discussing with uh, those so-called nominees uh, that they send us.
to uh, settle this issue of uh, security. Now, our opinion is that since the first uh, meeting uh, aiming at discussing this crisis in Nairobi and uh, for the bilateral uh, uh, organization that the AU uh, commanded, there is a, a plan that commended, there is a, a plan that we all have to validate, and that was uh, uh, incorporating ceasefire, uh, withdrawal, and uh, finally, and the incorporation in the disarmament, the demobilization, and reinsection program. So, uh, this is what we're asking and this is what we're expecting. And now to move on to your second question, I criticized, but I did not reject uh, the East African uh, force. I criticized their behavior uh, towards these agreements that I just mentioned, which are very clear uh, with uh, specific dates and uh, uh, withdrawal uh, modalities and the uh, uh, feasibility of the implementation of this agreement. But unfortunately, the East African uh, contingent, when they come, they did not observe it. Uh, we noticed that in the areas where uh, the Ugandan and Kenyan contingent, when they were uh, deployed, uh, they, they were sort of working uh, along with uh, the rebels. They were enabling them to collect tax and things, which was even not done by the, uh, those from Burundi. We uh, brought that on record, and since that time, we engaged in discussions uh, in uh, uh, frank discussions whereby we said things and additional modalities have been agreed upon and now we have new provisions and uh, by September we will see if those things will be uh, implemented and from that time we will redefine things uh, based on the way things will play out. Now regarding the SADC uh, forces I believe that uh, maybe we do not have a good understanding. We did not uh, ask uh, SADC support. You should know that within SADC there is solidarity duty inside. We do not even have to uh, request that aid because this is, it should be natural. Within SADC when a member is attacked, the others are duty bound to provide solidarity. And this is what was explained and expressed by SADC by inviting to this uh, uh, Troika uh, meeting, which is a uh, peace security uh, mechanism of uh, SADC, uh, the PSC framework, so that I can explain the situation of my country, the DRC. And uh, thanks to that, based on solidarity duty, SADC expressed to desire to come to the DRC because they were. Uh, the, this was a duty and responsibility as part of our charter. Since the time we now have to implement that, as you know, as I said, we have the East African forces that is in place. We first of all have to uh, experience how they will uh, behave, and the SADC uh, forces are still on standby, uh, but still at the disposal of the DRC to intervene whenever uh, this uh, will be uh, time to do. Uh, last time in Luanda, uh, we agreed the, in the presence of the AU and representative of other regional uh, communities to provide the DRC uh, the uh, ability to coordinate all those decisions, the management of all this uh, crisis. This should say that this means that the day the DRC will decide uh, and it will uh, uh, give uh, uh, permission to SADC to deploy uh, their contingents 
uh, here. For this time, we are still uh, working with the East African forces, and we're we'll, uh, uh, we observing how the disengagement of those uh, random supported forces will uh, come to an end. At this time, we have no comment to add upon that, and we will advise uh, in the few time to come. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President, Mr. Gods from Radio Okapi. Merci. Thank you. This question is addressed to President Félix Tshisekedi. Mr. President, this uh, great uh, BNC between uh, the DRC and South Africa or the bilateral cooperation between the two countries exists for, uh, since uh, long ago, uh, which has so many agreements. What is uh, the, uh, what stock stake do you take uh, based on what has been done as part of those uh, uh, partnership and only the result of this uh, stock stake that we're going to uh, know what we can say about the uh, current status of relation between the two countries. And uh, what are you expecting from South Africa based on economic and security uh, aspects? Well, uh, for reports, uh, we cannot give a final or definitive uh, report at this time, as uh, the relations are still uh, continued. Uh, all I can say is that uh, until now, what has happened was good and fair, but we can do better. And this is what we are currently doing now. Uh, we always uh, when you talk about uh, international relations, it is always possible to make things better. And this is it that uh, uh, thanks to the uh, meetings between the, our uh, senior officials, we insisted on the fact that we are going to follow up and proceed with the implementation uh, thereof, because those resolutions have always been taken and uh, several times, and today, we will uh, try our level best so that this can come true. Uh, majority of uh, economic exchange uh, that Africa does is always outside of the continent. The uh, exchange rates in uh, intra Africa is about 16%, if I think. And this is very insignificant. While Africa has more about uh, Pretoria, Kinshasa uh, Act which means between uh, the access, it means uh, between uh, uh, those two countries, it is uh, all about two potentially rich countries and which have uh, a good demography and that can uh, uh, use their influence to boost the, the, uh, the entire Southern African zone and um, take it uh, forward in terms of development. And of course, this will require more uh, uh, exchange and also basically the uh, follow-up and the monitoring of all the resolutions that we take now. This is the reason why uh, I am uh, expecting more from South Africa because we said things here uh, uh, and, and I believe uh, that we will do things uh, differently than the way things uh, were done uh, previously. Ladies and gentlemen from the uh, press, uh, we have a huge program for the both head of states and as I just said, uh, the final communicate that we're going to avail for you uh, incorporates all the answers to your answers uh, to questions. We're going to have uh, only two more questions. Uh, Oscar Mbal, RTNC uh, News Director. Merci, Thank you, Madam. I have a short question to address to the DRC President uh, regarding Grant Inga, uh, the South African Minister, emphasized on this program this uh, great project, even President Ramaphosa highlighted this. This is to demonstrate the interest to this, uh, demonstrated to this uh, Inga project. Excellency President of the Republic, there is an Australian uh, developer on uh, Inga uh, project uh, that you discussed with in Davos. Uh, I would like to know, is there room for everybody 
for every country in such an enormous project because at a certain time you were a little bit hesitant on uh, you were not uh, okay with the exclusivity contract because other countries are interested in this and other uh, South Africa and as well as other countries are uh, interested in this. Monsieur yes, uh, and I continue to uh, refuse uh, exclusivity. Uh, the person you mentioned knows my position because since the first time I discussed with him, uh, I told him that I would like this INGA project to be uh, an international project. It should be multi-stakeholder uh, uh, project. Uh, it should be open and accessible for many uh, various partnerships. But basically, after the Inga project, he mentioned saying that our project is open to any partnerships. But he figures that I think I happen to have the impression that uh, at the level of the developer, as you just said, the Fortescue Q firm did not com uh, meet the conditions that we uh, were expecting for him. But as the project was not uh, an exclusive project, uh, it was not uh, dedicated to only one partnership, Fortescue, so we felt free to engage with other potential partners. And today I can say that South Africa expressed not only the, uh, its interest, but also its commitment uh, I also, a few weeks ago, uh, had discussions with uh, World Bank representatives, and I can tell you that on that side, the World Bank is also uh, interested in uh, coming back to this project because they were put aside for reasons that I ignore. This happened before I took the office uh, as the president of the ERC, so I cannot say more about it. But now they have expressed uh, their interest to rejoin uh, this project. So the uh, project is therefore uh, ready to uh, move forward. And I might conclude saying uh, that uh, we have the demonstrated interest by the uh, Republic of China because during my discussion with uh, Mr. Xi Jinping, he also mentioned that. But I also believe that all of them need some sort of architecture. They need some sort of financial structure uh, of this project so uh, in order to know the capacity of uh, each and everybody to uh, contribute to this project. So uh, there is uh, enthusiasm uh, that this project, uh, Grant Inga, will really be implemented in a few time to come. Mr. Chair, we're going to take uh, a, na a, a last question addressed to you. We, there is a couple of questions addressed here. Uh, that's addressed to President Ramaphosa. He is the visitor. You should not address all the questions to me. Uh, that's the reason why I wanted to uh, do things this way. He is our host. He is our guest of honor. We should really care for him. So we're going to have a question from BBC. Thank you. The question will be addressed to both presidents is regarding visa. Uh, the Vice uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs, just talked about uh, exemptions regarding uh, visa granting. He named some categories of people, but we know here in DRC to receive a visa for South Africa, it is uh, really difficult, and people are complaining. Can we expect that uh, thanks to this uh, uh, improvement of of uh, South Africa DRC relation can make things easy to grant visa uh, to go to South Africa from the DRC. That's my question. Thank you very much. Yes, the issue of visas did come up under the broad topic of immigration. And uh, as you correctly say, uh, the relationship between DRC and South Africa uh, is not only improving it is at a very high level because we work very well together on a number of issues ranging from security uh, and we're going to be improving trade and investment as well as visas and we have both recognized that 
it is important to allow the movement of people as well as goods between the two countries. And to, to that end, we are going to be focusing a great deal of attention to the visa regime between the two countries. Uh, as it, you all know, I mean, do, people do get diplomatic visas, they do get business visas, and we now need to be looking more closely at how we can enhance the whole process of granting visas for people from the DRC to come to South Africa. We do go through a process, uh, not only with the DRC, but with many other countries. And that process is underway, and we are going to be addressing this matter. Uh, what I can tell you is that this matter was raised very, very prominently in our discussions, and we are going to continue in uh, various ways to look at how we can make it practical. The willingness, the intention, and the objective of making sure that there's free movement of people between our two countries is there. We just need to look at the modalities and the practical side of it. So I just want to leave a hopeful message to people in the DRC that uh, on South Africa's side, yes, it's not that we are not willing to open up. We just need to look at the various modalities and the various processes. So when we next our mid-year term review, as well as our next BNC, we will have made a great deal of progress in that regard. Thank you. So you don't like to applaud that? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. And one more. La dernière question, Madame Rachel Kizita, Actu Trump. We have the last question from Madame Kizita. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. To go through the election process, we have always supported all democratic processes in the DRC and calling for stability of the elections and their success. Uh, with the last one, we did exactly that. With this one, we will do exactly the same, and we are prepared to give practical support as well in every way that is possible. And we call on the people of the DRC to ensure that they hold peaceful elections that will have a credible outcome, as to be welcomed and recognized by all. And when you do that, you will be entrenching democracy in the DRC and demonstrating to all in the world that the DRC, one, is stable, two, is democratic, and uh, is uh, seeking uh, to be a very, very prosperous and successful country. So we support the elections and hope that they will go well, and our support is unconditional. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Excellence, Messieurs les Présidents de la République. Thank you, Excellency, Mr. Merci beaucoup. President of the Republic. Thank you so Alors, pour much. Uh, Merci. la presse, Now, uh, les bus sont au parking si uh, vous voulez aller au palais du peuple. Merci.